First thing you're going to need is loading up songs. To load up songs, we have these blinking music selector buttons here. You could press them, and then here you will see all of your music sources. You press the drop-down menu right here. DJ Pro has a lot of streaming services and music sources to choose from. Apple Music, Tidal, Beatport, Beatsource, and SoundCloud. You could it also comes with music, DJ music. There are a lot of different genres, a lot of different music that you could start DJing right away if you don't have a streaming service or don't have any music on your iPad. And then my collections is what they call your playlist. Then down here, you're going to see your playlist. You could create a new playlist like this, and then you're going to see all of your playlists here. The music select button is going to be the, is going to do the same thing in all view modes. And a hidden feature with the music select button is if you hold, if you do a long press, then you'll get these hidden features here. Scratch and Shazam. If you have the Shazam app, you could actually turn it on and then add the music right to your playlist or load it up onto a deck that you hear in your environment. And then the scratch tool is a really cool scratch sample track by DJ Kubert. And there are a lot of good scratch samples that you could use. And then if you have a song loaded up and you hold it in again, you get the double feature. This means the same track on one deck is going to be on the other. Now you may notice that, it, that the features here look very stripped down and there's really not much you could do. That is because we are in one of the newest view modes, and that is starter mode. So to get to your view modes, this is how you're going to navigate through the software and access all of the features. Record symbol over here. Press that, and then you get this menu. And so right now we are in starter, and then there's all these other modes. I'm going to get to those after. Let me just cover starter because there's not that much on it. This is made for if you're just starting out or you just want to play songs one after another and have it mixed for you, then this setting's for you. Also, if you're new to DJing and you don't want to get overwhelmed by all the knobs and buttons and all the other stuff, this is a great way to get started. So right here we have two big jog wheels. It's like a mix between a job wheel and a record deck. Really big surface area, really good for scratching if you want to start messing around with scratching a record. This is a great place to do it. We have our BPM over here. BPM, you could go up and down. And then we have play buttons, obviously. Press it again, it's going to pause it. And then we could access out some effects over here. Press this middle button, we have some samples all the way to the right you could switch them over this is going to be an, an effect pad and then these are going to be instant effects right here so you could get started djing in starter mode but you're probably going to want to switch to the other modes once you get a little more advanced with the software press the middle button and then the next one is auto mix i guess i'll just go in order Auto mix is amazing. It's not cheating. And what, what this does is it's going to automatically mix your songs together using AI technology based on the playlist you have selected. So there's a drop down menu here. You could change your transitions. If you do automatic, it's going to automatically choose which transition will work for the two songs. And it does a great job most of the time. Duration. So to get to our playlist, we'll press this over here, select the playlist. So now a playlist is selected and it's playing. And then you'll notice these lines down here. These are going to symbolize when the mix is going to start mixing. And then over here is when it's going to mix out. So you can see now it's doing a transition, mixing the songs. Auto mix is great. And the coolest thing is you're not stuck in this view mode. You could actually go to classic mode or go to pro mode. And over here, right next to the middle button, you can see that you're still in an auto mix. So the auto mix is going, it's mixing for you, but you can access all of the features. And that's how I recommend using auto mix in case you want to hop in, maybe do a scratch or add some samples or effects. You could do that while an auto mix is going. And then you could easily press stop auto mix and hop back on the decks, start DJing yourself. So I skipped over classic mode. Let's go back there. 
This is classic mode. Why would you use classic mode if you have less access to, fe to the features that are in pro mode? Well, number one is this mode is good for scratching because these jog wheels are really big and they do have a lot of surface area. And also it looks really cool. It'll have the actual record cover like the album art will be on these decks, which looks really cool. Just like if you would have took a record out of the package and put it into a real record deck. And if there, if the software doesn't have the album art, it'll just have these really cool DJ branded vinyls. So now over here, you get all the features that we had in starter mode and more. And more, so I'm not going to talk about the features we talked about with the other mode because... The BPM slider play pause button are pretty much the same. A cool hidden feature is you could actually scrub through the track by moving these arms over here. And now we have our access to our loops up here. You could instantly set a loop, automatic loop, all the way up to 32 or all the way down to 1 and 32. And then turn it off like that. So if it's in blue, it's on. Turn it off and press it again. The blue goes away. Next is our sync button. And this will automatically match up the BPM and the beat. A good trick is if you're trying to get two songs to be the if you're trying to get two songs to be the exact same BPM, it may be hard if you're adjusting this BPM slider on the iPad. So a good trick is you could just press sync once and then now it'll bring it to the same BPM as the other track. And if you don't like sync or you're against sync and think it's cheating, you could turn it off right after you get the same BPM. Another feature that I kind of went over another feature with the bpm is right here it's kind of hidden it, that's a key lock so that'll make it so if you raise the bpm or lower the bpm a lot it won't sound really high pitch or low pitch i'll give you an example so i would like recommend leaving that on crossfader is going to if it's to the left, you're going to listen to the left deck. If it's to the right, you're going to listen to the right deck. And in the middle, you're going to have both songs mixed together. But DJ Pro has a really cool advanced feature. If we press this drop-down menu here, you could do crossfader effects. So these are going to do transitions for you, whichever one you choose. It's going to do the transition for you just by moving the crossfader. You don't have to do anything else. Really cool, great advanced features. I like doing the transitions myself, so I don't use it, but a lot of people really like this crossfader FX feature. So now down here, a feature that we get that we didn't have in starter is the temporary Q button. If you press it once, it acts as a Q button. Wherever you choose in the song, it is going to be a Q button there until you, ch until you change it. But there are a lot more features you could access in this view mode. It looks a little limited now, but there's a couple ways to access more features. Number one is going to be this EQ button here. This is going to open up a volume slider, filter, and those are our little gain controls. And then our levels are going to be in there too. But what I would recommend doing is pressing this EQ button. And now you could have either a neural mix or a regular EQ, lows, mids, and highs, and you don't lose any features. So we have our levels, volume control, gain control, mode, mids, highs, and filter. You may be wondering where are the waveforms. Other softwares have a lot of waveforms and you may be used to mixing like that. Well, you're in luck. If you press the middle button here, we have these beautiful, amazing waveforms. It's really easy to see exactly what's going on in the track just by looking at it. So these are vertical waveforms. And then next is going to be our sampler and our looper it's a very limited view of our sampler and looper you don't get every loop pack you don't get every loop box or sample box but it is here it's what i like to use it for is if i'm scratching then you can do a sample after you're done scratching so that's classic mode basically i only use it when i'm scratching or doing dj tricks that in involve the jog wheels most of the time, 99% of the time, you can find me in pro mode. So if we press the middle button, now we are in pro mode. This is where you're going to have the, the most features at the same time ready for you. There's another way to access features in this view mode, and that is these buttons down here. 
but when you press them, watch what happens. You lose the jog wheel. So you get more features at expense of your jog wheel. But if you have the waveforms open here, you could use, they are active. You could scratch the sound like that. Open this. And then now we have Neuromix. This is going to instantly create acapellas and instrumentals. And then also down here, there is a Neuromix that's always there. So instant acapella, instant instrumental. But with this section here, you could you could have more bands, drums, harmonics, and vocals instead of just vocals and harmonics. Next is our cue point. Choose a spot in the track, press an available box, and you have a cue point. Cue points are really important. I recommend every song you add to your playlist, mark your cue points at least where you're going to start and stop. I know I said I wasn't going to talk about settings, but a cool setting that you could do is this drop down menu here. You could actually change the color of the cue points. So my start and stop are always in red. So as soon as I load it up, you could see it up here and you could see it in the waveforms that you have your color coded cue points. Really cool. Next is going to be our loops. Wait, let's go back. The cue, you could do a pitch cue. You could kind of do like a pitch play, make a rhythm, make a rhythm uh, either plus or minus. Slice. Another way you could do DJ tricks, which kind of like drum in some beats. Really cool feature. And then a hidden feature is you could do this drop down menu and you could get the skip and you could skip a certain amount of beats. Or like I said, with auto mix you could you could set start and stop cue points for auto mix so it's the same thing as a cue point but every time that track loads up in an auto mix it's going to start and stop on these cue points where you select it now next is going to be our loops you could do an auto loop two loops notice how this lights up here it does the same thing as up here just another place you could you could do it you could make save loops so if you like to loop it at a certain point in that track you could have a save loop and then bounce is another one of those if you want to like drum it in and make beats make rhythms out of it really cool next is effects so there's a couple different ways you can control effects in this amazing software number one is called manual effects you could have up to three effects at the same time and then you could adjust parameters and adjust wet and dry basically what this does is all the way to the right, you're, you'll hear the effect. And then if you turn it to the left, you won't hear the, the effect as much. So you kind of blend in the effects, make it sound nice and smooth. So that's manual, instant. It's just what it says. It's going to apply an instant effect. You don't have to adjust any parameters or anything. Pad effect is going to is going to apply one effect at the same time and then add a high pass and a low pass filter. Really cool. This is a really great touchscreen feature with these pads because it's fun to do. Next is our EQs. So we do have EQs here in the middle, but you may want your waveforms open. So now you could have your waveforms open and use your EQs, lows, mids, and highs, and the filter right here. And our levels are gonna be visible here with a little gain control up here. So these features here that you can open are going to be exactly the same in pro mode, but we're going to have a lot more features that we could use. So here in pro mode, I'm just going to start at the bottom. So if you have this one selected, you're going to have the access to all of those same exact features that I just talked about. But the good thing about pro mode is now we can have that whole strip there at the bottom, but we still get our jog wheels and our waveforms, even though our jog wheels are much smaller. But these jog wheels are going to give you information, the BPM and the time of the song, how much percentage BPM that you've changed. If you press this, uh, this features button again, you'll get the biggest view of your waveforms. If you're used to DJing with waveforms, then you, you're going to love this part of the software. You have features here, EQ, volume fader, but you lose a lot of features, but you do get a big view of our waveforms. Next, you could have your library. This is where you're gonna find a nice big view of your library, making your playlist, finding the next song. Nice big view of our library, and we still have all the features up here. Also, if you press the music select button, you're gonna have a full screen view of your library. Next is over here. 
So you know how I said in classic mode, it was a limited view of our samples and our looper. Here is where you're going to find the best. The, here is where I would recommend using the looper and the sampler because we get all the samples, all the loops here. What the looper is, you can make your own beats. I would recommend messing around with this. I'll give you an example. It's probably going to be bad. You could just start a beat. It's like having us... Uh, music production software inside of this software really cool definitely recommend messing around with it and to change our sample packs is this drop down menu here and then to change our loop pack is the same drop down menu there we have a play button and then we have a volume slider over here over here most of the time when i'm in pro mode i'm gonna have it looking like this features down here mixer in the middle jog wheels and waveforms next we're going to have the looper so look at what we could do with the looper here in pro mode all of these feature features and information up here if we switch to looper the only thing we get more of is these volume controls volume controls down here you could actually turn it off over here but you lose the waveforms you lose the jog wheels you lose so much stuff and you could do the same as in pro mode. So I'm going to go really quick. Same thing as in pro mode. Like that for the looper. Or for the sampler. So you'll find the sampler inside looper mode too. A little confusing. You just get a big view of your looper. And then minimal features up here. Next is one deck mode. This is for, cre is for setting your cue points and organizing your tracks. So when you find a new song. You could put it in here. Get a big view of the waveforms. Select your cue points down here. Select your auto mix start and stop. And a big view of your playlist. This is for organizing your tracks. There's not much you could do here. Four deck mode. Yes, you could use up to four decks in this software. So four decks. Everything's kind of tightly spaced. But you do get access to all your features. So we have features down here. And then we have the same thing as the features button in pro and classic mode. You could press this, and then you have that full control there if you want. Really tightly spaced, but you don't lose any features. Definitely recommend checking out 4-deck mode. And then video mode. This app has an amazing video mode, and if you're not taking advantage of it, I definitely recommend you should. So this is what it's going to look like. So the biggest difference between this and pro mode is we have these, vid the, these visualizers up here instead of jog wheels. But you could use them as jog wheels. Drop down menu here. Different visualizers. You could get more. You could add an overlay like an image. You could add text. Like if you want to set, wanted to say DJ Pauly or DJ something. You could do that. Here are going to be our transitions. And then it's going to be the same on the other side. And it's really easy to connect your iPad to a TV or a projector. And if you want to learn how to do that, check out this video over here. Thank you.